I'm Allison Singer with the Autism Science Foundation, and I'm here now with Jennifer Pinto Martin uh, from the University of Pennsylvania School of Nursing and School of Medicine, and she is the meeting chair for IMFAR 2010. Thanks so much for joining us. No problem. So, what are some of the most exciting studies we're seeing at IMFAR? Well, that's a hard question to answer in a short amount of time. I think we are seeing exciting things on several fronts. We're seeing a lot of excitement in the epidemiologic world, which is my world, in terms of beginning to understand some of the important risk factors, beginning to be able to sort out what some of the environmental triggers might be for autism spectrum disorders. There was a session yesterday where there were several papers talking about uh, premature birth, preterm delivery, and use of um, IVF and other assisted reproductive technologies and uh, those, those things conferring an increased risk of autism. And that's a new area. There's a lot of interest and exploration in that. Uh, so in terms of understanding causes, we have a lot. We are also getting better and better data on prevalence. We're really establishing what the prevalence looks like in the U.S., how it varies by race, ethnicity, how it varies by gender. Uh, those are important data to help drive the etiologic studies because as we begin to paint the picture of the distribution, it helps us think about uh, what factors might be influencing that distribution. So it's a really important sort of fundamental tool for this kind of research. Um, and then there's the very exciting area of brain imaging and we're really learning about neural connectivity and about the important structures of the brain that have an influence on autism. And we're really drilling down, I think, in a very new and exciting way with the technologies that are available to understand how these brains are different from typically developing brains. And then there's the whole area of treatment. And I think we're seeing, uh, I think probably that's where the most excitement resides right now because uh, we haven't had that. And that's something that we really need. It's something that the families are desperate for. And you know the strides are, are, are small at this point, but important. And we're beginning to understand how behavioral interventions can influence the way children develop in the early years and how they function in the classroom and how parents and teachers can influence that, uh, that developmental trajectory. We're learning about pharmacologic agents that can have an influence on the behaviors of autism spectrum disorder and can control those behaviors so that children can take better advantage of the interventions that are, that are provided with. So it's really a remarkable meeting because we're seeing the progress on all of those fronts all the time, uh, simultaneously, really. There also seems to be so many more students at this year's IMFAR than in past IMFARs. Can you talk a little bit about that? And I think that's really true, and it's very exciting. I'd love to know what the mean age is, and I think it's quite young. And so they, there is now a student committee that really is active, and we helped them find a venue for a student gathering. And initially, they thought there were going to be about 60 students based on a poll that they had done. There were 152 students there last night. So I think that students are coming to this area uh, from all different disciplines, from clinical disciplines, from research disciplines. Uh, because they understand how important it is. They see it in the media. Many of them know families who have children on the autism spectrum, and I think it's sort of an uncharted frontier. They recognize that there's opportunity for, uh, for discovery, and they're excited about that. So it's a very energized uh, group and a young group, which is good because we need this to continue for a lot of years. At a meeting like this, there's a <coughs> tremendous amount of science being presented uh, in the meeting rooms, but there's also a lot of discussion out in the hallway. Mm -hmm. I know you've been walking around mm -hmm. talking to people. What are people talking about? What are people most excited mm -hmm. about that's coming out of IMFAR? What are they going to go home and tell their friends and family about? So I think one of the things I'm hearing over and over again from people is that we have to collaborate. So. A lot of people are doing similar studies in their own institution, in their own city, in their own state. And we're collecting similar but not identical data. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think what people are recognizing is that in order to move the science forward, we need to be able to pool our data. We need to be able to collaborate. And so I'm hearing people say, well, we should share our data. We should share our collection tools. What are you doing? This is what I'm doing. Here's my card. Let's talk. And I, that, to me, is a really exciting and unusual 
phenomenon. At a lot of scientific meetings, people are interested in their own agenda and they're going to stick with their own agenda because in the end, it's about your own career. And I, I think that it's different here. I think people are really interested in coming to a solution, coming to answers. And if that means collaborating and that's the fastest way to get there, that's what they're interested in doing. So there's a lot of buzz about that. We're also really seeing a lot of concentration on genetics and the influence of environmental factors on that genetic substrate. And that's several of the sessions we're focused on understanding gene environment interaction and we're learning more and more about the genetics of autism every day both using mouse models and and human studies and uh, that's we know it's a genetic disorder and so that's a very important avenue for future uh, intervention and amelioration of the disorder. It seems like there's also a lot of focus on a pathway that begins with genetics moves into animal models and then moves into treatment. Is that something that you think we'll see continuation of or that more work is going to be done uh, along that continuum? Absolutely, and there's some really exciting pharmacologic studies that are taking that approach and I think it's a wonderful way to go and will hopefully allow us to roll out therapeutic agents in a rapid fashion. So yes, I agree. There also seems to be a lot more families at IMFAR this year. Mm -hmm. was Did you make a, a purposeful effort to reach out to more families? And, we and what did. are the families saying that they're experiencing and, and learning and most excited about from IMFAR? We did. We did make a particular effort this year um, with the help of uh, some of the folks at the Center for Autism at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia to really reach out to families and invite them and make them feel included and have a touchdown space for them and have uh, a a, a way for them to manage the meeting with their child if they chose to bring their child or children. And they responded and they came and there were families that were actively involved in the planning uh, for other families. And uh, what I've heard is the same kind of excitement and, this, and, and a gratitude about how many people are focused on this and caring about this. And so I think it's a very positive feeling on both sides. So IMFAR 2010 is still going on, but IMFAR 2011 is already in the planning stage. We'll be in San Diego. Give us a first glimpse of what you think we'll be talking about at IMFAR 2011. Well, I'm not going to be planning it, <laughs> but I will definitely be there. Uh, and it's going to be a bigger meeting, bigger than ever, and that's what we've been seeing. The, the number of attendees has increased substantially from last year. I'm sure it'll increase again, uh, which is very exciting. And I think, uh, again, it will be the same uh, sort of multifaceted uh, approach to understanding the distribution of the disease, understanding the cause of the disorder, understanding how to intervene to help these children be the best that they can be, understand therapeutically what might help these children. So I don't think they'll be particularly any new and exciting avenue, but I think all these avenues will continue to move forward at a very rapid pace. It's a very, very exciting time. Well, we all appreciate the work that you did to organize this year's IMFAR, and thanks again for being with us today. You're very welcome.